everyone! Today I will be sharing with you 13 YA books that you need to read. Hi everyone! My name is Lexi and welcome back to my channel. I am very excited about this because excited about this video because I actually love YA. I feel like I don't talk about it quite as much as I talk about middle grade or as much as I talk about a lot of adult literature. However, I love YA. I would love to someday write a YA. I read YA all of the time and some of the best books and my most favorite books ever are YA. Today I really really wanted to share with you 13 standalone novels that are YA that I think that you will love hopefully and that I love. Um, so yeah, let's just go ahead and get into it. So just as a little bit of a disclaimer, these are actually all of my favorite books. The way I curated this list was just purely based on my personal enjoyment. If we have similar reading tastes, I think that you'll like these, but anyways, okay, great. The very first book is a book that I've read twice and that I really, really wanna read again, and that is I'll Give You the Sun by Jandy Nelson. When you listen to the synopsis, the synopsis really does not do it justice. The synopsis itself is, is cool, but like it doesn't suck you into the story quite like Jandy Nelson's writing does. Her writing is on like a whole other level and like I I want to I want to I want to visit that level. That would be nice. That doesn't make any sense at all. Anyways, this follows two twins, Noah and Jude. This actually follows two different timelines. So we follow Noah's perspective when they are 13 and then we follow Jude's perspective when they are 16. And it's just like the most beautiful, amazing book ever. I Please read this if you haven't read this is what I'm trying to say. But this follows Noah and Jude and uh, they were twins who used to be inseparable and then something happens and they stop speaking. And so we as the audience are trying to figure out what it is. But there are so many beautiful writing elements in this. There are so many fantastical things. There might be a little tiny bit of speculative fiction going on in here. I think it's gonna be really, really great for anybody who wants to read books in general and just read it. I just really like it, okay? The next book I have here is Alatsue and this is by Darcy Little Badger. This is a brand new book to me. I read this in January of this year and I absolutely love it. This takes place in America, but in an America where there is known magic and accepted magic. And it's really cool because there are like fairy rings that can transport you to different places and there are ghosts and it's, it's just really, really neat. This follows Ellie. Ellie's cousin has actually just been murdered and he comes to her in a dream and tells her that his murderer is walking free. Alatsue wakes up and she decides to track this guy down and figure out what happened. It's got a lot of really, really cool magic in it, but I also really, really loved all of the different tales from her family. She is indigenous and so we get to hear all of these really, really beautiful tales about her great, 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 great grandmother and the magic that she had. I just, I love this book so much. I think it's fantastic and I highly, highly recommend it. The next book is a book that I had to read in my YA course materials class for grad school. I am so glad that we had to read this and that is Long Way Down and this is by Jason Reynolds. This is just one of the best books I've ever read ever in my entire life. The whole thing is also told in verse, which I think I really, really like in books and I really want to reach for more books that have verse like this because it was just so well done. This follows Will and Will's older brother has just been shot dead. And so Will thinks that he needs to avenge his brother. This entire thing takes place in the elevator um, and he's going down to try to find his brother's killer. And while he's in the elevator, he is visited by different ghosts. It's so good, you guys. Like I have chills, literal chills just talking about it. It is so incredible. It's gonna make you cry inevitably. Like it made me sob like a baby. <laughs> And I just love it so much. Um, so yeah, if you want a hard hitting, beautiful book that is going to make you cry, please read this because it's just, it's so powerful and it's so fantastic. And I think it's one of the best YA books just ever written, period. The next book is a little bit speculative, which is a theme that you'll see. I do have very specific taste and this book is just, oh, 
it's peak, it's so good. And that is Never World Wake, and this is by Marisha Pessel. This is just one of my favorite books. I mean, well, okay, they're all my favorite books, I, I get it. But like, it's just, it's really good, okay? It's really, really good. So this follows Beatrice, and Beatrice's boyfriend has passed away. And after he died, she sort of distanced herself from her friendship group. But one night right before, I think they all go to college, and this is in the summer, they decide to all get together and hang out where they used to hang out, which is in one of Beatrice's friends' houses, which is right on the coast. However, one night, that night, there is a mysterious knock on the door and a stranger is blown in by the storm and says that time has been snagged. They are going to be stuck in a time loop until they make this very impossible decision. I don't wanna say what it is because I feel like it might be a, a smidgen of like a little bit of a spoiler, but anyways, it's really, really good. It's, it's so fascinating, the dynamics of this friendship group Group. I just really enjoyed every second of this. It's kind of a thriller and you're just trying to figure out what really is happening. Like what, why are they really not hanging out? I don't know. It's just really, really fantastic. Could not recommend this more. Marcia Pessel is just a genius. Next up, we have a book that has completely stolen my heart and makes me feel so single. And that is A Million Junes by Emily Henry. So this is a little bit of a Shakespearean retelling of Romeo and Juliet, which like, right away just tells you you're gonna cry. So this is about June and Saul, and uh, they come from families that absolutely hate each other. But then cute Cupid, that silly old Basically, they end up kind of falling in love and they have to try to figure out why their families hate each other. This is filled with beautiful magical realism. It is stunning. The images in this book evoke such powerful emotions and you will cry, you will laugh, you will absolutely fall in love with these characters. I thought it was beautiful. Definitely one of the best books I've ever read, like hands down. Even if you're not into romance, pick this up because the speculative elements elements and Emily Henry's writing just, I mean, superb, like absolutely out of this world. The next book that I absolutely loved, but also ripped my freaking heart out of my chest was The Astonishing Color of After, and this is by Emily XR Pan. There's a cat hair on my hand. This particular book is a pretty hard book for some people to read, so I just wanna tell you straight up that the triggers of this involve suicide and death. So just be careful when you are going into this book because it delves into those topics pretty deeply, but it was just handled so incredibly well, and it was so beautiful. So this particular book follows Lee and Lee's grief because her mother has just committed suicide. Lee is convinced that her mom has actually become become a bird and she is also convinced that the bird wants her to go and visit her grandparents who live in Taiwan. And so she and her father travel to Taiwan and it is just filled with magical realism, with grief, with beautiful images, with healing and trauma and it's just handled so incredibly well. I thought everything about it was absolutely beautiful and uh, it's one of my favorite books of all time. I will stop saying that after this book. Okay. The next book is Summer of Salt. Why have I been calling the Summer of Salt and Sorrow? It's, there's no sorrow. The next book is Summer of Salt, and this is by Katrina Leno. This follows two twins who live on an island, Georgina and Mary, and they belong to a very special family where every single woman has this magical ability, and they find out sometime before their 18th birthday. But this is the final summer that Georgina can actually try to find out what her power is, because it has not shown up. And if it doesn't show up before her 18th birthday, she just, she doesn't get a magical power. This particular summer proves Prue actually comes and Prue is like a tourist who comes to the island to try to find this very rare bird. And it's a little bit of a romance between Prue and Georgina, although that's really not the main focus of this book. The main focus of this book is the entire summer in general and also what happened to this bird. And you know, when you hear it like that, it doesn't sound as impactful as when you read it, but trust me, everything about this just sucks you in. The plot, the romance, the 
writing, the twists. It is so beautiful. It made me cry so incredibly much. I think it's one of the best books just ever written, period. I really, really love this book so much. Next, let's go to a little bit of like an old school YA favorite. Now, I know that this book has divided a lot of people. You're either gonna love this or hate this. I am this book's biggest fan. I am this book's biggest cheerleader. I have read this several times over and like, I just, I think that everyone should read it because it's so good. And that is We Were Liars by E. Lockhart. What are with these birds? So I'm gonna read the back. It says, we are Sinclairs. No one is needy, no one is wrong. We live, at least in the summertime, on a private island off the coast of Massachusetts. Perhaps that is all you need to know, except that some of us are liars. <laughs> But yeah, this is great. We're following Cadence and Cadence goes to her island. Her family's very wealthy and they live on an island in the summertime. She and her cousins are all lying about something. It's really good. I don't know. I know the synopsis is vague, but like give it a shot. Next up is a book that I love with my whole heart and that is We Are Okay by Nina LaCour. Oh my God, it won the prince too? Well, okay, you know it's gonna be good if it won the prince. So this book follows Marin and Marin has run away based basically to New York to go to school, but she has kind of left her old best friend and her old life behind. This book really is exploring the grief that she feels from losing her grandfather. It is so sad and sweet and beautiful. There's a really, really lovely LGBTQ plus romance in here between Marin and her best friend. But again, sort of like Summer of Salt, that isn't really the main point of this. The main point is exploring grief. And the writing that Nina LaCour does in here is just so beautiful and heartbreaking and some of the paragraphs in here are some of the most beautiful paragraphs that I've ever read in any book across any genre. So if you love beautiful writing, you'll have to pick this up. The crow is cracking me up. I don't know, like I wish you could see. He's like, he's mocking me right now. I kind of like him though. Next up, I have got two romances to share with you. The first one is Love and Gelato, and this is by Jenna Evans Welch. I have mentioned this book quite a few times on my channel, actually. I think that this was featured in an old video that I did, and that video was Books That Make Me Happy, and this definitely makes me so incredibly happy. We're following Lena, and Lena's mother has tragically just passed away, and so she is sent to go live with her father who lives in Italy, and while she is there, she discovers her mom mom's old diary. Her mom was there when she was Lena's age and so she decides to kind of retrace her mother's steps and along the way she meets this really cute boy and it's just this really beautiful romance. I think it's so cute. It's light, it's fluffy. It's not really as heavy on the grief, although there, that is a small portion of the book. It's really about healing and it's this really cute adventure. I loved every second of this, but be prepared. Reading this, I mean, I probably went through like four pints of gelato, so. Then the other romance is a book that I will be super brief on because I have talked it to death on my channel, but I love it and that is a little something different and this is by Sandy Hall. The reason I like this is just because the writing was so quirky and so different that it just, it made this romance feel so fresh and innovative. This actually takes place at a university between two people who everyone can see are like destined to be together. However, both of these people are painfully shy and so neither one of them wants to make a move on the other one. This entire book is told from different perspectives of everyone who sees them. We see a snarky barista. We see their English professor who's trying to set them up by making them work together. We see their friends. We see a park bench's perspective. We see a squirrel's perspective. It is really out there. It is wacky, but it will make you laugh. And also it will make you want to fall in love. I just, I think that it is so perfect. And I really, really loved it. Next up, we have The Strange and Beautiful Sorrows of Ava Lavender, and this is by Leslie Walton. This is taking a very different turn from A Little Something Different, whereas A Little Something Different was one of the most lighthearted and happiest books I've ever read. This is probably one of the most tragic and saddest books I've ever read. It's also very divisive. You're either gonna love this book or you're really gonna hate this book. I was one of those people who, like, I couldn't get enough of this book. <laughs> 
<laughs> I annotated the crap out of this book. I mean, it was so beautiful, but okay, anyways, this is about the Rue family, and we follow all of the different generations, and magic has touched every single generation of this family in one way or another, and we see all of their kind of perils and their struggles, and a lot of the generations kind of end in heartache and in sadness, and it all leads up to Ava. It's kind of interesting though because the strange and beautiful sorrows of Ava Lavender, it, I feel like it sort of should talk about like the history somehow, like the strange and beautiful history of Ava Lavender's family because Ava Lavender is a huge part of this book, but it's not the whole story. Like most of the book is just following all of the generations in her family. It's really incredible. I think it's so beautiful. There's a lot of sadness in this book though. And, and there's a lot of things I think that could be triggering to people. So I would look, Oh, someone texted me, random. Sorry. <laughs> I would say maybe look up different triggers and stuff just to make sure that you're gonna be okay going into this. I don't know what to mention because it's been so many years since I've read it. I don't remember all of them. But yeah, if you like family history and if you love beautiful metaphorical writing, I think you are going to love this book. And then finally, the very last book that I have to talk with you today is Wild Beauty, and this is by Anna Marie Macklemore. This is magical realism, in my opinion, at its finest. And I just, I really, really enjoyed the writing in particular in this book. So this book follows Estrella and her entire family. They have this ability to create flowers that come from their hands and their wrists. And they essentially tend these beautiful and lush gardens of this mansion. One day, a boy pops up from the ground. Estrella's grandmother and all of her great aunts are convinced convinced that this boy is going to somehow change everyone's destiny. And so Estrella is trying to figure out where he came from and what his history is. We just follow kind of like this very magical tale. I thought it was beautiful. This is also LGBTQ+. It's got some really, really great rep in here. I just, I thought it was really, really great. And I, I really loved it so much. <laughs> Those are my top favorite books that I think every single person should read. If you are in the market for a YA standalone, why don't you try one of these? And if you have any recommendations for me, things that you think that I will like, things with magical realism, hard hitting YA standalones, please let me know down in the comments. I always love adding different books to my Goodreads. I think that's it for now, you guys. So until next time, keep your head in the clouds and your heart in a book, and I will talk to you very soon. Bye. You're my best friend. Didn't care about the rules, good on the weekends. I'll be in fools, drift in the deep space So brave and so stupid, just like the movies How it's gonna stay in the fight with you